Technology has come a long way since the invention of the first internal combustion engine in 1872 by American George Brayton. Since then, there have been a lot of new engine designs and even some so crazy that people said they would never even work. Some of these engines are super rare and unusual, so if you're a gearhead and you love cars and engines, then buckle up and check out the most unusual engines. VW's V5 and VR6 engines are admired for their throaty, wholly addictive exhaust note and their performance. Volkswagen's VR6 engines were hot news when they appeared in the late 80s, but many of you might be wondering what the VR stands for. Basically, the big guys at Volkswagen wanted an engine that was as compact as their existing four-cylinder Passat, Golf and Corrado engines, but had more power to fit in the same place. The VR6 was designed as a narrow angle engine, with VW designing two narrow cylinder blocks which are 15 degrees apart and sharing a single cylinder head. The V describing the shape and the R referring to the fact that the cylinders were in line. It is the offset banks of cylinders that gives the engine its unique sound. The VR6 made its first debut in the Passat and Corrado in 1991 and was a 2.8 liter with about 150 horsepower. In 1999, it was given 24 valves which increased horsepower to 210. Capacity was increased to 3.2 liters in 2001 for the 225 horsepower RSI Beetle. But by 2015, the engine was dropped from options and no longer being made. There was talk of a VR6 revival in the form of a 496 brake horsepower 3.0 liter twin turbo unit. But with the constant evolution of four cylinder cars and increased awareness of environmental issues, the plan was dropped. The Mazda rotary engine was an incredibly unique design that had everyone wondering how it worked. Felix Winkel himself was a German engineer who came up with his version of a rotary engine way back in the 1920s. However, the first working prototype wasn't invented until the 1960s. A rotary engine is a barrel-shaped internal combustion engine that lacks many of the major parts you'd find in a conventional piston engine. For one, there are no pistons moving up and down. Instead, rounded triangular rotors from two to three rotors spin around a shaft through a hollow barrel. The amazing thing about these engines is that you can actually add or subtract a rotor and barrel assembly. You might think that this engine first came out in the RX models, but Mazda put these engines in the German NSU Ro 80 and the Citroen GS Birotor as part of a joint venture between 1967 and 1977. The engine did end up in the RX designation cars and finally the RX-8. Mazda last built a car powered by a rotary engine in 2012 and abandoned largely due to poor fuel efficiency and emissions. Everyone knows about electric cars by now with Tesla and a bunch of other car companies jumping on the electric wagon following in their footsteps. However, even electric cars have their shortcomings, and the biggest one of those is their range. However, some hybrid cars can be equipped with the free piston range extender, which runs on pump gas and in turn generates electricity, allowing the vehicle to charge while you are driving it. The piston-driven gasoline engine gives an electric car owner the flexibility of long-range travel and connects directly to an electric motor. So the gasoline engine isn't turning the car, it is actually directly connected to the electric motor which increases the electric motor range. It's a cool concept, but last time we checked, it was still being evaluated by makers of electric cars. Here's a weird one that many people might not be familiar with. Many people probably do know that in the late 60s and early 70s, Cadillac made the largest engine available on a car at 500 cubic inches, and it was among the most powerful engines available at the time, and owners expected this. However, by 1981, Cadillac had to change things because vehicle emissions were getting stricter and fuel economy regulations were laid down on car manufacturers. By the time the emissions laws got done with their V8 engines, they were so anemic that a caddy could barely out-accelerate a compact car. 
So Cadillac's answer was a strange one-year-only V864 engine. It was a variable displacement engine that had newly developed electronics that would measure engine load and then deactivate cylinders, leaving the valves open so there was no compression. No fuel would go to the injector and spark would be cut off at the plug. Sounds cool, but Caddy owners didn't care for this system with one of the biggest complaints being how rough the engine ran in V6 mode. The good thing was that you could just disconnect one wire to disable the system, and it's estimated that 80% of the owners had the dealer pull the plug, so to speak. Infinity makes a great car, and their technology when it comes to vehicle manufacturing is cutting edge. So it should come as no surprise that they have been working on an engine for the past two decades which is variable compression. Usually, a combustion engine comes in one compression only, and the higher the compression ratio matched with the necessary higher octane fuel, the more power you get out of the engine. The problem is that high compression engines will also eat a lot more fuel and also put out a lot more emissions. The variable compression engine can alter its compression ratio, which is the volume of the combustion chamber when a piston is at the bottom of the stroke compared to when it reaches the top. The result is said to be an engine that can deliver the high performance of a gasoline engine as well as the torque and efficiency of a diesel. The VC Turbo is a turbocharged 2.0 liter inline 4 with direct fuel injection and will initially deliver a peak 268 horsepower and 288 pound-feet of torque. Infinity has confirmed the engine's availability from 2018. The Porsche Furman engine, codenamed Type 547 and named after its creator, Ernst Furman, was built from 1953 until 1964. It was an air-cooled four-cylinder boxer engine with four overhead camshafts which are powered by four vertical shafts. The crankcase, cylinder, and cylinder heads were made of aluminum alloy, which gave the engine low weight with its small size. The technology for the time was very complex, and the engine is very rare with just under 2,000 ever made. It incorporated an innovative valve drive which allowed drivers to reach astonishing speeds. The engine was so good that it put Porsche on the racing podium several times. The Furman engine in the Porsche 904, or the Correa GTS, had been enlarged to 2 liters and produced a mighty 185 horsepower which was incredible for the time. However, the Furman engine was not frostproof and may jam at low temperatures, owing to the differing expansion rates of the metals used. Many 356 Carrera vehicles therefore underwent heart surgery to remove their vertical shaft engines and make them more usable on a day-to-day -day basis. Thus ended this remarkable invention. The Tucker Type 0335 is a horizontally opposed six-cylinder engine that was derived from an air-cooled Bell 47 helicopter engine designed and built by Franklin for use in World War II. The engine was modified for automotive use and utilized the industry's first sealed water cooling system. The engine was then supplied to Tucker and put in the Tucker 48 torpedo. The engine itself was a 335 cubic inch flat six engine that had overhead valves and put out only 166 horsepower, but was a torque monster with 372 foot-pounds of torque. Tucker claimed the engine was capable of accelerating the torpedo to 60 miles per hour in 10 seconds and up to 120 miles per hour top speed. The engine was very innovative for the time and it sure looked clean, but the design was definitely interesting as a flat six engine. This engine is rare, not as rare as a Type 547, but a good rebuilt example sold for about 35000 at an auction recently. In 1991, Dr. Herbert Hudlin began to look at the traditional auto-diesel combustion engine and how its efficiency could be improved. With some help, he came up with a compact spherical motor-generator combination that is radically different from the traditional inline combustion engine with significantly fewer moving parts. The way it works is like this. Two opposing curved twin piston heads rock on the same bearing. When two heads are pushed apart, the opposing pistons are pushed together. This has the effect of rocking the cylinder heads back and forth. The crazy part is that on the top of each of the four piston heads is a large titanium ball bearing that runs in a channel that is circular in one axis and a sine wave in the other. 
The channel completely encompasses the pistons and their rocking causes them to rotate on an axis perpendicular to their bearing axis by swimming along the channel. A ball bearing guide channel is fixed to one side of the spherical aluminum housing while on the other side a permanent magnet ring is attached to the rotation axis of the cylinders. Fixed to the inside surface of the enclosing sphere is a ring of electromagnetic coils and the interaction with the spinning magnet causes the generation of electricity. It's a cool concept, but it would seem that electric car battery technology likely killed the idea when people thought it would be decades to be good enough for an all-electric car. A company named Duke has been working on an axial motorcycle engine designed for over 20 years now. They have designed a prototype that looks nothing like a conventional internal combustion engine from the outside, and the differences extend inside the cases as well. Five conventional 200cc cylinders are arranged around the engine's center line, with the cylinders parallel to the crankshaft, much like chambers in a revolver, for a total displacement of 1,000cc. There are no camshafts, push rods, rocker arms, valves, or springs. Instead, a series of sliding seals similar to a rotary engine take care of intake and exhaust duties. The cylinder group rotates counter to a Z crankshaft at roughly 20% of the crank's rotational speed to significantly reduce vibration and torque reaction. Power output is competitive. The firm claims 125 horsepower and 88 foot-pounds of torque at 7500 RPM, the maximum engine speed. While that might not seem like much, you need to keep this in mind. Duke says its five-cylinder prototype weighs just 86 pounds and measures roughly 17 by 10 by 10 inches. That's about two-thirds the weight and half the size of a conventional 1000cc inline-four. Can you say awesome power-to-weight ratio?